This is Janet Diane Moyes Wordlow and my husband, I know his portrait, who's just filling in for him since he is in Japan, reporting to you on the news for the second week in May of 2014. I have a lot of interesting news for you. In fact, so many interesting stories that I couldn't even put them all in, otherwise we would be here all day. But the top story that seems to be circulating through all the news right now is that of the 276 missing schoolgirls in Nigeria, if indeed they are missing. What's so interesting about this story is that President Goodluck Jonathan, yes, that is his real name, has a wife named Patience, who officially they say is not the First Lady because the Nigerian Constitution does not have an office of First Lady. However, Patience questions whether or not the girls were even abducted in the first place. And the people who supposedly abducted them, the Boko Haram, which means Western education is sinful, even though they have now taken credit for that, supposedly she says that the protesters who are in the streets trying to get their government to go look for the girls are actually Boko Haram and are out to cause trouble. In fact, she claims that the leader went with her to the police station and that, of course, Patience was released and eventually this uh, protester was also released after being interrogated. However, when the First Lady was accusing all these protesters of belonging to Boko Haram, she says that the officials of the government and the ruling party were cheering and chanting, yes, yes. Now this goes right along with everything else that we have been seeing going on in the world where people are saying, is this true or is this false? Did it happen or did it not happen? And this is all over the internet right now and actually quite astounding to consider what's happening because now the UK and the US are both sending troops in to look for the missing schoolgirls. And while I have empathy slash sympathy, if this kidnapping did indeed happen, I want you to understand that in these kinds of countries, these, this is not an unusual event where they go in, they swoop down on a village, they kill people, they take people, they do everything. So it's not that I would condone such actions, obviously, but the fact that we are sending people in and having them um, having this story go all over the world, now that in and of itself is unusual. So please follow this story closely. In fact, they even show a picture of Michelle Obama holding a, a placard which is going all over the internet saying, bring back our girls. And there are other ones being held up saying which girls are missing, you know, the ones that your husband killed with the drone attacks, you know. So it's going to be kind of a little interesting uh, soap opera, I believe, the way that it's getting started with. Now, the Pope is demanding legitimate redistribution of wealth. Well, now, what exactly does that mean? Because we happen to know that the Vatican is really the wealthiest country in the world. And yes, remember, it is a country of its own right. He is saying that he is um, go, uh, calling for governments to redistribute wealth to the poor in a new spirit of generosity to help curb, quote, the economy of exclusion that is taking hold today as he continues his campaign against capitalism. So does this mean his government? So why is he always calling for redistribution of the wealth, but yet we see him holding uh, golden crosses, sitting in golden thrones, you know, all kinds of things. He has absolutely everything at his disposal, but yet he continues to call for redistribution of wealth. Now, what you want to remember, and I tell you this all the time, is you have to pay attention to the actions versus the words. And this is how they program you. They say so much, so vehemently, that you really don't stop to think about what they are doing. And what the Pope is doing, what the Vatican is doing, is they have tremendous wealth. And if no other country let go of any other money, they could feed the poor without a problem. So let's find out by watching to see if the Vatican redistributes its wealth. That would be a plus in my opinion. Let's see what happens. On to Chernobyl. Now I have reported about what's happening in that area right now as far as the trees and the fauna and those sort of things. I did that a couple weeks ago and I told you that it's not breaking down the way that normal um, forests and trees would do if left unattended. Now, I have another report here 
about scientists who are going in and studying um, who are, they are studying the um, animals of Chernobyl and they're saying that the animals are paying a price so I watched this little video and what was interesting to me is it says that Chernobyl will not be fit for human habitation for at least another 20,000 years however these people are going in without any protective gear on, without any suits on. You know, they're measuring radioactivity supposedly, but they are not doing anything from what I can tell to protect themselves from it. So if it's so bad, why are not they dressed up in some kind of protective suit? It says that for nearly three decades, humans have been barred from living within a 1,000 square mile zone surrounding the reactor. Now, again, if this is the case, and it really is not bothering people or animals or the forest or the fauna. What is really going on in that 1,000 square mile zone surrounding the reactor? So I think this is leaving us with more questions than it's answering. And of course, if we believe what this uh, Radia couple tells us, that actually radiation is good for us and in doses that we can handle bit by bit. And speaking of radiation, I have read that the experts have decided that the possibility of building an ice wall at Japan's Fukushima nuclear plant in order to stop the radiation from leaking into the groundwater. But the experts are criticizing this plan, and this plan, if put into effect, would cost approximately 320 US million dollars. So let's find out what happens with that because there's a lot of things apparently going on that we are not being told about. North Korea says that it is conducting tests for an intercontinental ballistic missile that could potentially deliver a nuclear warhead to the U.S., a U.S. think tank, 38 North said uh, this past Friday. Now, again, go to your world map, look at North Korea, See what a little tiny country that is. And again, they can't feed their people. I mean, the stories that we're being told is absolutely preposterous as far as I'm concerned. And moving on to stories here in the U.S. Governor Rick Perry of Texas on the Clayton Lockett execution says, quote, I don't know whether it was inhumane or not. Apparently, he was defending the use of capital punishment and lethal injections after the disastrous execution of Clayton Lockett in Oklahoma on Tuesday, which again renewed a national debate on the practices. Now, a long time ago, of course, people were killed or executed, as they like to say, in a variety of ways, and they went to lethal injection. Now they're saying that lethal injection is having its difficulties and perhaps it's not humane. So, you know, they're, they're still not saying they're not going to kill people, it's just how they're going to kill people or execute them. So anyway, we're going to watch for more, um, in my opinion, I think there will be more public executions as time goes on. And in Oklahoma, we have the government prompting a rare earthquake warning because there have been as many earthquakes rattling Oklahoma as California this year, apparently. Some of them as large as 5.0, which is pretty high on the Oklahoma shake scale. Now, just north of Oklahoma, we have Indiana. In Indiana, we have sand dunes that are being called the new geological phenomenon because mysterious holes are opening up in sand dunes, one of which nearly swallowed a child last year, and apparently it's going to keep a Lake Michigan park closed indefinitely. The Indiana Dunes National Lakeshore, which is only about an hour from Chicago, will be closed for the summer and beyond because scientists are not able to determine how the holes, which seem to appear and disappear within one day, are formed in the 43-acre dune. They're calling this a new geological phenomenon. So let's, again, keep our eyes on what's happening here in the Midwest, and of course we are on that major New Madrid fault line. So let's find out what happens. Now in Lake Huron, apparently archaeologists are discovering a prehistoric stone wall deep beneath the surface of Lake Huron. And they are saying that apparently they're believing that this is perhaps human made. And this wall runs apparently between Alpena, Michigan and Point Clark, Ontario. 
and they're saying, as they were studying uh, the, apparently the Alpena Amberley Ridge, that they were doing sonar scans and all of a sudden they found this on their computer and they said, quote, oh my God, what is this? Apparently, in 37 meters of water, just 50 kilometers from the shore, they are seeing two stone lines forming a lane about 30 meters long and 8 meters wide, which ended in a corral-type structure. And they believe that they were corralling migrating animals into and through this corral for possible hunting reasons. So, again, you know, all kinds of things are showing under the earth, in the waters, they're, they're changing history in front of you. And they continue and they will continue to do this. Speaking of which, the White House is making another report on global climate impacts. They did not tell us what that report is yet, they just told us that they're going to be doing that. And in Antarctica, they say that an ice shelf on the brink of unstoppable melt could raise sea levels for 10,000 years. So of course, this is a result of global warming or climate change, or whatever it is they want to call it, according to them. And again, if it's really even happening. So they're saying that this is going to uh, slide into the ocean and raise world sea levels for thousands of years, according to a recent study. So again, keep your eyes out. Now on to some other news that's a little bit, of course, we get into that weirder part, and that's what we need Stuart for. I'm so sorry I'm not here today. I'm very tired. I'm sleeping right now in Japan. All right, I understand. Well, speaking of Japan, in China, which is kind of next door, Teenagers are using cabbages as pets. Can you believe that? Oh my gosh, cabbages as pets, I can't believe that. I like to eat cabbage, not use it as my pet. Yes, I understand that. Anyway, what they're actually doing is they're putting them on ropes and leashes and pulling them behind them and using them to talk to as friends, I guess. So I thought, that, okay, remember the cabbage dolls that were popular here in the US? Well, that's, uh, I don't know, something else is going on in China. And Google Glass. Now all of you are eagerly watching what's happening with Google Glass for a variety of reasons. And Google Glass says now that the doctors are interested, medical doctors are interested in wearing these because this can give them advantages when they're working with their patients or doing surgery, they're hands-free, they can look up all kinds of uh, research um, as they're talking to you or doing surgery and so on and so forth. So, of course, this would be a wonderful way to make Google Glass very legitimate, is if your doctor is wearing it and your doctor is doing it, then of course it's, it's a good thing. And I have in my programming section, speaking of Google Glass, that there was a man, his a former Marine, Iskoto, who they called him Izzy Ocampo, said that he had fatally stabbed six people in Orange County, California, and he had a kill gene in his body that led to the attacks. And eventually, according to this, while he was in police custody, he committed suicide as a result of this kill gene, I guess. He killed himself. That sounds like heavy programming to me. And Miley Cyrus, who I do mention to you from time to time because I do believe that this is part of what's happening in our world as a programming icon, so we need to have at least keep our pulse, our eye on the pulse. Anyway, as many of you may have read, she did collapse on one of her uh, performances, and of course then blame that on an allergy to prescription medication, which I don't believe any of that. However, what I believe is her programming is breaking down, so now they say she will have a nurse on standby during her UK tour. I say that she's having a programmer on standby during her UK tour. Because anybody who's doing what she's doing, they've got to be very highly programmed because you just don't do that kind of stuff. All right, and in the actress world, Julianne Moore, some of you may or may not know who she is, she claims that all actresses are hungry all the time. Again, that's a programming thing. You don't need to be hungry if you're eating and feeding your body properly. As you know from the work you're doing on my monthly blog, of course, you don't need to be hungry, and it's sometimes it's okay to be empty, but there's a difference between being empty and being hungry. And continuing on with some of our programming information, this one you want to close your eyes again. 
Okay, we have a New York City book club that's going topless to quote, make reading sexy in, in New York City because they want to remind you that toplessness is very legal in New York City. That's a quote. So you're going to find these people sitting around reading their books outdoors and they say their group is nude friendly, gay friendly, everything friendly boutique hotel. So that's what you want to do, I guess. That's your thing. And what else have we got? Ah, uh, this was sent to me by a reader. This you'll find especially interesting because of what you wrote about in your true world history book. Okay, I'm all ears. Okay, now, apparently, as you wrote about in your book, that the study of ancient Greek is actually illegal in Greece. Well, apparently, there are foreigners who are studying ancient Greek and are saying that it is a therapeutic language. And of course, as you know, Greek and all alphabets, really, they're all archetypes. Apparently, those people who are using it with children and other people with issues are finding that they're able to reverse them, such as uh, for a variety of disorders. One that is especially being touted right now is dyslexia. Apparently, by using this ancient language, you can reprogram the brain, and of course, in a positive way. And this is one of the things that Stuart and I have been talking to you about for quite some time, is that there is a division between what the upper class, the elite, the global handlers, whatever you want to call them, get, and just your average layperson out there. You have different music, you have different techniques, you have different educations, you have different politics. Everything is totally different for you. So you want to keep that in mind. And believe it or not, that's all my stories. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. I only had to cover my eyes once. Yes, I know. It wasn't too bad. I had so many stories, I really had to take even some of them out. But I do want you to be aware of our upcoming events that we have going on. Because, in right now, of course, you know, Stuart is in Japan. It's high, been highly um, successful over there. People love him. And, yes, I know, and I love Japan. That's what I heard. And I saw the food you're eating was magnificent. Oh, it's amazing. I'm even dreaming about it in my sleep. Yes, and the people have been very kind and good to him. So they're asking him back in the fall. So watch for a new... Um, for announcements for when we set dates for that. And in June of this year, just a few weeks away, Stuart will be in New York City, June 6th, 7th, and 8th, for a free lecture, personal consultations, and a three-hour introduction to hyperspace. So if you want to see Stuart, mark your calendar, because that's going to be a great event. And last time we had standing room only. We're expecting that again. So please do contact Patricia, customer support at expansions.com. And if you want a day with Stuart, it's going to be very limited this year. The schedule is getting completely booked up. Summer in St. Joseph is amazing, so you might want to take advantage of that. You might want to wrap a day with Stuart in with our August 8th, 9th, and 10th special event on communication here in St. Joseph. We will be working on toning, color, and archetypes specifically, and all things that have to do with communication. So you can better understand yourself, you can communicate better with your oversoul, with the God mind, you can better communicate on the outer world with whatever kinds of relationships you're interested in working on. That's what we're going to work on. And we're going to have a couple little nature walks thrown in, which is always kind of fun. And then, of course, we have our annual fall conference coming up in October, the 10th, 11th, and 12th, Everything Oversoul. January 2015 is right around the corner, believe it or not. We will be having again our very, very popular Hyperspace Oversoul Extravaganza, where you come for an entire week, and we immerse you in Hyperspace Oversoul information, and we answer all your questions, and we get you set up for the whole year. And this is um, an astounding class. It's always a great group of people. We have some people who come back every year because we take you deeper and deeper into the information that you're getting into. And that's what this work is all about, is to teach you how to be your own teacher and to continue to go deeper into who and what you are and to be the best that you possibly can be. And of course, if you're interested in our Oversoul Mastermind group for 2015, the Hyperspace Oversoul Extravaganza class is a requirement amongst other things. So again, for any information on this, oh, and plus, I have some great 
uh, spring clearance items on because I've been doing spring cleaning here at Expansions and digging out some corners and finding some things. I have first iterations on a lot of our archetype cards. A really good buy on those. We have some of our old chakra socks. We have some uh, archetype cards that are bigger. We have the White Wing Dragon products. We even found some elixirs, which are frequency and printed waters, which are really nice. And if you get a bottle, you can keep adding steam distilled water to keep that frequency growing and going. So, do you have anything else to add, Stuart? No, I don't. I really am supposed to be sleeping, you know. Yes, I know. Well, get some rest because I know you have a big day because really today is tomorrow there and by the time that you see this or don't see this then it's going to be the next day. So it could be, get very confusing for you. So I don't want to confuse you. Thank you so much, Janet. All right. So it's a pleasure as always to have so this chance to visit with you about what's going on here at Expansions.com. Please do your best to keep your mind safe. Work on that mind pattern. Join me on my monthly blog. Uh, share with your Facebook friends, like our pages. I mean, we are never boring. We always have so much going on. And we enjoy your participation and meeting you, however that happens to be in person, on the website, on Facebook, the social media platforms. You know, it's all good. So thank you again. This is Janet Diane Morris-Wordlow for Expansions.com. <music>